And once again, the Maryland Terrapins fall short, do not make the Sweet 16. They've done it just once under Coach Mark Turgeon. Uh, we talked a little bit about it earlier, but there are definitely restless fans that follow the University of Maryland. It's not just about this year. It's about the entire tenure, and they're getting frustrated that Turgeon hasn't taken this team deeper. He's had a grand total of one Sweet 16 while he's been there. And that was actually with the team that was ranked number two in the preseason in that particular year. Our friend Barstool Nate wrote an article calling Maryland a dead basketball program and says it's Hmm. all Mark Turgeon's fault. He says Maryland hoops is a disgrace Hmm. compared to what I knew of it growing up. If Maryland fans are fine with being a perennial double-digit seed and just happy to be here, give Turgeon a lifelong contract. But if we want Maryland hoops to be a real threat again, it's time for him to go. Any of you guys buying into that? I kind of buy into it a little bit. Um, This year was surprisingly good, and I know EB is going to point out that last year they were supposed to be, but you have no idea what would have happened in the tournament. And his point is you've got basically uh, a decade of evidence. But that was the best team he's had. There's been no success. Yeah, but that was the best team he's had. And they didn't get a chance to prove their worth. So I do have sympathy for him there. And I also, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt because, as I said earlier, and I've said it a million times, we had the same criticism of Gary for the first six, eight years or whatever of his tenure, however long it was, before they finally broke through. Now, Gary, though, Except for Gary was getting to the Sweet yeah, 16. Yeah, Gary was getting to the Sweet 16. one extra round. So and I think one if, extra round. If, if Turge had beaten Alabama... Last night, and they're in the Sweet mm-hmm. 16. I don't think Barstool Nate's, you know, writing that that piece no, on him. Probably not. You know what I mean? Because that would have been a huge yeah. win, arguably his biggest win as, as Terps coach. Uh, it's hard once you get into the tournament again. I understand why you're pissed off that you're a 10 seed. That means you didn't have a great regular season, but you played in a really tough conference. We thought until they got to the tournament, right? Um, and you're a 10 seed. So if you win that first round, which you did against UConn, and they look really good against UConn. UConn's mm-hmm. a pretty good team. You're playing a top six, or at, at worst, top eight team in the country. Bama's really good. They won their conference, won their conference tournament. So I understand. They were just I a just, better team. I they just lost think to a better team. I just think it's a reaction of, you know, it's kind of frustration that they lost that, that, that game. I would say this about Turge. I, would, I, I want him to start keeping the local kids, especially the WCAC kids, home. And, you know, the DeMatha kids, the Paul the you Six kids. Want, he wants to. The it's Gonzaga hard. kids. I think it's got to be a bigger attraction for the local kids, especially the, the toughest conference, arguably the toughest conference in the country. So keep the Hunter Dickinsons, keep the you know, Jeremy Roaches, keep the Trevor Keels, who's a stud at Paul the Six now. Is there something uh, behind the scenes I don't know about that Travis Garrison is the last big DeMatha recruit that Maryland has gotten? I mean, that was forever ago. Like, is there... Is there tension brewing between DeMatha and Maryland? Is there an issue I, there? I, I don't know that for a fact unless the the coaching staff just doesn't show up and doesn't look at the, the kids. I have no it idea. Does not make I mean, how could it? I'd have could, to find that could, out. You could walk from Maryland to DeMatha, and it's uh, it's one of the the best hoops programs well, in the country. Well, that's yeah. like, why, because they get recruited from all over the country. And I think also when you're a kid and you're local, sure, it sounds great to play at Maryland, but also, man, it's like if Notre Dame comes or, you know, that's also it's a chance to go play somewhere else, get, you know, a different life experience. So it sounds I think it's easier said than done to keep kids local. Can I, I think just... a lot of kids want to go if they're, you know, if they're if they're um, recruited by, a, you know, a big school somewhere else like in yeah. Indiana or something. That's pretty cool. Okay, that but may re- be the but case, remember, but maybe they don't get the top guy from DeMatha every year. Get the third or fourth guy from DeMatha. Recruit him if he's good yeah, enough to play Yeah, but that might not be Maryland. good enough. I mean, God bless him, but it's Well, hard. remember, DeMatha players used to always go to Maryland. All right? Back, back to Adrian Branch. Branch right. went there. That's um, a lifetime Dwayne, ago. Dwayne Simpkins went there. Drob Mustaf went time. there. We're talking about, yeah, but we're talking about top players at sure. their school. And they, you know, Lefty Drizel recruited those kids. Gary recruited those but kids. But then you got some Forte Bogans. And they go to Kentucky, they go to North Carolina, right. like kind of since that era. Bogans, you've got you're going to go nothing. to Kentucky over Maryland. Right. You're just going to. Obviously. But can yes. I distinguish Gary's tenure, besides the obvious national championship from Turgeon's? So Gary took over a team that was on probation. And even in his first year, they were 19 and 14. He found a way to get to the NIT. Then, you know, they're 
not allowed to be in the tournament, and they were competitive there for three years. Now, he did finish under 500 in two of those years. But then we're talking about Sweet 16, Sweet 16. All right, two exits in the first round. Sweet 16, Sweet 16. So Sweet 16 in four out of six years. Mm-hmm. Then they only made it to the second round in 2000. And then back-to-back Final Fours with the National Championship. So it's not even close. And I think Nate being a fan, and I think there are a lot of Maryland fans that feel the same way. If you want to chime in, 800-636-1067, it's not this year. Maybe this year they actually exceeded expectations. But it's the overall 10 years and the overall disappointment that you're never really making runs. And part of it may be the recruiting thing, that you're not getting enough top-tier players. I understand they had a couple of really good players last year. But even the guys that make the pros, if you think about it, like he can maybe say, well, we've, we've had these pros. They're not doing anything in the pros. They're not stars. They're, they're, they're barely in the league. Uh, t- t- tell me what Jalen Smith has done this year. Well, he's in the G League right now, as far yeah. as I know, unless he got elevated back recently. But I mean, Kevin Smith- Herter's in the league, but... I mean, yeah, please. But those, okay, well, it doesn't was, matter. Just because they're not great pros doesn't mean they weren't a very, very impactful. You know, Jalen Smith was a very players. good player. I understand they if were Jaylen college Smith, players, but you would think over time, in a decade, that you might churn out a couple of stud pros. Well, I just well, think was, it's. I just think it's. Well, Gary definitely did. No Gary one's comparing. Developed them in a unique way. No yeah, one's comparing no Turge to Gary. You, who cares? You, yeah, who, you who cares if they're pros, JP? <laughs> but let me just say well, this. No, but that's part of the, the – it, it, it tells you the talent that you're bringing in there. To be even better, Sometimes, you need to have a couple of guys. Like Bobby Hurley was an pros. unbelievable college player and was a nothing no, no. pro before his accident. Tell me how many pros are on Loyola, Chicago. I don't know. <laughs> Probably yeah, aren't zero. any. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think that's a great argument, but – I just think that it's just very hard to advance in the tournament. Okay, it just is. You could have a really good team. Look at Illinois. A lot of people had Illinois winning the national championship. Okay, Clark Kellogg had him winning the national championship. A lot Beat, of beating, did, sure. beating Gonzaga. They're gone. Uh, Ohio State gone. Bye, Iowa bye, is bye, gone. Bye. Yeah, you're talking about well, ones and two seeds. How many times Virginia would get bounced pretty early? But Virginia lost to a 16 through. seed. Yep. Now, yeah. now you you have. Now, he, he can say, well, we came back and won a national championship the next year, which is huge. All right, but right. then they, they get bounced but prior early this to year. That, but prior I to that, it. everybody said that style's not going to work in the play. And I even said Maryland is playing the UVA style, and it's just, I actually think, not conducive to tournament success year in and year out. But, but also a lot of UVA Maryland having more success in the conference before you even get to the of NCAA course. tournament, they were having much more success than what of course, Maryland has but that's, Yeah, but that's still a huge disappointment when you have great success in the regular season and you get bounced early in the tournament. Understood. I would think that's more disappointment. Well, I think that's a good baby step to have is have more regular season success when you yeah. think, and then maybe we can have that translate to the well, tournament. Well, yeah, but I mean, like Eric was saying, two years ago, they had a great regular season. They just got, had bad luck with COVID. Everything canceled. Who so knows what they would have done that, that year? That could have been, that's what I'm saying. I got to give them the benefit of the doubt. That could have been their breakthrough year where, like, at least the final eight would have been very plausible. Very plausible. What would it take for you to move on from Turgeon if you're a Maryland fan? 800 636 1067. Like, Georgetown eventually pulled the plug on JT3, right? Yeah. He took him to a Final Four. He took Georgetown well, to a Final Four. And Ewing could have been in trouble if they didn't win the Big East tournament. Could have been. For Probably sure. I should think they want to give him one more year because of the recruiting class he's got coming in. Maybe. Yeah. I'm just saying, could have been in trouble. Absolutely. Georgetown, I guarantee you Georgetown fans and alums were saying, we got to go somewhere else. Right. Guarantee it. So let's say Turgeon gets him to the tournament. Like you said, six out of seven years. Let's say he gets him to the tournament next year. First mm-hmm. or second run exit. Happens again. Like, are you just okay with that? I think Barstool Nate's point is that maybe there are some fans that are just okay with that. But that's just kind of accepting... No I wouldn't call fans it mediocrity. are just okay with it. No fans are just okay with it. But I think when you look at it, you, you just can understand what's happening. It's not that you're okay with it. No one's, no one's okay with it. No one wants to just get to the tournament and be happy. Everyone wants to win a national championship. Right. All right, let's yeah. go to the phones. 800-636-1067. You can call us on the Gambit DC listener lines. Bet, play, win with Gambit DC. Brought to you 
by the D.C. Lottery. Who's up? All right, let's go to Jay, line one. Jay, what's up, buddy? Hey, fellas, how you doing this morning? What's up? What's up? Hey, I'm, I'm just calling to chime in on this. It's been a decade now, and we've been mediocre. I mean, I think everybody's kind of seen that this coach's feeling is probably getting to a Sweet 16. I don't think he's going to be taking us past that. And this team's lucky to get into the tournament most years. It, it's going to the basketball. The kids don't get to run much. It's too structured on offense. I just don't, and I don't see any kind of adjustments ever happening. So, yeah, it's time to move on. I would rather take a chance, roll a dice on another coach, and have it go south than to continue in something that you know is not going to get any better. And that's my two cents. Do you have, do you have, you have a, have a nice day. hold on real quick. Are you still there? Yes. Do you have yes. a coach, do you have a, a coach in mind that you would like to hire to replace Turge with? Oh, my gosh. If I could, I don't know if we could pull him out of the mountains, but Bob Huggins would be my first choice, <laughs> without a doubt. He He's up there in the years. He's hills of West Virginia. And He's not leaving the West Virginia. That's ever. a perfect gig for him. He's not leaving That's there. That's the perfect gig. I mean, give me, some, give me someone realistic. Now, this right. guy's not available, but and, he, and they just face him, but what Nate points out in his article is uh, Nate, Oates Nate Oates just took over at Alabama, and look what he's done. You know, yeah. we've talked about the success Nate, of Virginia Tech recently, that there are guys that can elevate programs. I think Nate Oates is probably going to get a bigger job than Maryland. You know what I mean? I think that he's in, he'll be looked at for some of the bigger jobs, and I don't see Maryland as a big, big job. I think Nate Oates will get a bigger gig. Now, it might not be this year, but it might be next year. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if an Indiana went after him. Um, mm-hmm. So... I don't know. I mean, I guess that's an, a realistic option. I just don't see him leaving Bam to go to Maryland. The guy who would be a perfect fit, and Dravi puts it in there, and I've said it for two years, but they probably won't do it, is Lonergan. Lonergan would take them. He would get them absolute most out of their ability. Absolutely. Convinced a 